Choosing the right watch for a job interview is something that not everybody might think is that important. If you're in a position that you have multiple options to choose from, depending on the watch that you wear might either help you or hurt you when you make that first impression trying to apply for a job. The nature of the job you are applying for plays a major factor in determining which is the correct watch. Sales is one of those jobs that you're gonna wanna wear the best watch that you have. Give you an example. Let's just say you're trying to apply for perhaps a sales position at Ferrari or Lamborghini. You know, the guy that's doing the hiring is gonna see if you are a real deal salesman. Having a nice watch on is gonna show that not only are you a go-getter, but you're also successful and it's gonna give the appearance that you are the best at what you do. Not everybody has that option to have all these different watches to wear. Nothing wrong with that. But if you don't have one of those watches, you might wanna leave at home an inexpensive watch. For example, if you have maybe a guest watch, nothing wrong with that, everybody started off somewhere. But this is one of those positions where you may not wanna wear that watch that day because it might just be better to come off as if you're not a watch guy, you understand what I mean? And so you can work your way up and then maybe go to the next step and get a tutor, something like that. Another job that falls in that same exact category would be real estate. Again, another sales position. Having a nice watch is always gonna give you that presence when you're closing that deal. And if it helps you close a deal to sell the houses, then when you're applying for the job, it's clearly gonna help. With these type of positions, obviously your sales record should be the one that speaks for itself if you're applying to a high profile real estate agency. But when you have that nice watch on your wrist, it's gonna tell that recruiter or that person you're interviewing with that you are the real deal, that you are a closer. That is what a watch like this Patek Philippe 5980 is gonna say to that interviewer. It's gonna say, I'm a closer. So back to those watches that are inexpensive. Look, nothing wrong with all these other watches and I understand that some of you at home are not there yet or young professionals beginning to start making money and collecting. I get it. Um, I would say that if you were gonna wear a G-Shock or a Guess watch or a Diesel watch or something like that to an interview at a big firm or something that sells luxury goods, I would say that if it's not a high-end watch, you're better off on that day of that interview just not wearing it. That's just my opinion. I mean, Apple watches are acceptable for pretty much anything nowadays, so that doesn't fall in this category. Next, I'm gonna give you an example where perhaps maybe wearing that heavy hitter might work to your disadvantage. Say you're an insurance adjuster and you're applying to work for a new insurance carrier, okay? Um, if the guy that's interviewing sees that you have a gold Rolex Presidential on, I mean, I don't even care if it's a 36 millimeter from the 90s all the way up to the current model. That's not a good look. Insurance carriers are gonna look at you like you're up to doing fishy stuff, you know? You're gonna wanna fit the part for that type of job. That's the type of job that you're gonna wanna leave any luxury watches at home when you're applying for that job and maybe even while you're working that job as well. You know, there's certain jobs that you don't expect the guy to be wearing a really nice watch. I'll give you another example where there's an exception to the sales rule. If you were selling life insurance, honestly, I'm not sure that I wanna buy life insurance off of a guy that's wearing a diamond out Rolex. You know, it's just, there's certain positions where a nice watch can actually hurt you and not work for your advantage. Here's another scenario that's not your everyday one, but it also applies. Say you are a professional in any field, whether you're an architect or project manager or, you know, different things. But let's say that you have also a side business that's very successful and you're doing very good, but you're just one of those workaholics, okay? I would say that if you're gonna apply for some form of a real professional role, it might be not to your advantage that you show up with this badass watch because it's just gonna raise a lot of eyebrows, you know? 
here's a guy that comes in to apply for a district manager in a certain field and you're wearing again a super crazy heavy hitter on your wrist you know the person that's hiring is going to kind of be like what the heck is going on here maybe not knowing that you have a successful side business, whether it's e-commerce, maybe you're a professional and you're day trading also, other things like that. You know, a lot of people do have second forms of income nowadays. Um, it seems to be very common nowadays. That's one of those positions where I think it would kind of raise a couple eyebrows like, why does this guy need this job? Or is this the right guy for the job? Things like that. Or maybe you might come off like, maybe you're just too expensive for them. If I had some really nice watches and I was going in for a professional role somewhere, I probably wouldn't wear a badass watch. It's just one of those things that I, I, I don't know if I'd want to look like I'm more superior than the guy that's interviewing me. You know, you might walk in and yeah, the guy might not be into watches or maybe he is and you walked in with his holy grail. I just feel like that's already going to put you in a bad position. Overall, having a nice watch always helps. I say that the best watch in the world is the stainless steel Submariner. Any of these situations that I talked about, a Submariner in stainless steel, whether it's a very old one or a brand new one, it's always good. It says, hey, the guy's responsible. He likes nice things, saved up to get it. It shows that you're accomplished, that you've done this, but it doesn't go over the top. I just can't see where in a job interview, a Submariner can't help you out. I don't know if some of you guys can agree with me here. Yes, there is a ton of other watches, maybe an Omega Speedmaster as well. Another good watch that you could put on can say, hey, the guy's got a good watch on. People always respect you for some reason a bit more. I'm not the one that makes these decisions. It's just the way the world is right now. Let's just face it. The reality is, is that people perceive you a little bit different when you have a nice watch on. So yeah, coming into any one of these meetings wearing a Speedmaster is a good thing. What happens is when you go to the other extremes, whether A, you wear something that's too expensive, or B, you wear something that's not gonna really make the cut. Like I mentioned earlier, a Nixon watch, a diesel watch. I mean, listen, I collected watches since I was a kid in all prices that I can afford, but I wouldn't walk into the most important meeting of my life with the watch that I bought at the mall for under $200, if you understand what I'm saying. For me, if someone came to work for me since I'm in the watch business, it would kind of help if they had a nice watch on, but they would almost lose points if they walked in with one of those watches that I was just talking about. First impression that you're gonna make in that interview, make a decision that's gonna be tasteful for the occasion. You know, sales is probably the easiest one. You're gonna to wanna to wear the heaviest watch that you have. But these other positions, try not to overdo it. Sometimes too much just works against you. So keep that in mind when you're out there setting up for that big job and you wanna make that first big impression. Nowadays, it's, it's a little bit hard to impress people. You know, you might walk in with something and it might not be what they like and they might think, you know, that's bad taste. So it's almost better to just not wear anything if you're unsure. If you got an AP Royal Oak Rose Gold and you're in sales, I mean, obviously the guy that's hiring is gonna say, wow, this guy's a go-getter. This guy like legit is the real deal. I mean, unless you're wearing a fake watch, then you just made the worst decision of your life pulling in there, perpetrating like you have one. <laughs> you also have to always keep in mind that you don't really want to one-up the person that's interviewing you. I mentioned that earlier. I mean, what if the guy is a watch guy, but you know, his grail watch right now is maybe a $1,500 watch. So, you know, you kind of want something that maybe can be a bit inspiring, but not insulting. So just keep that in mind. I always say that one of the best watches you can wear is a stainless steel Submariner. Say it again. If you have a stainless steel Submariner. I mean, not everybody has a stainless steel Submariner, and I get that. It's not really a good look when you go somewhere and the employee has a flashier watch than the boss. I mean, yeah, of course, maybe the boss doesn't like watches, but still, it's gonna give off that wrong impression. You're applying for a construction position, bro. Usually you're not wearing a suit. 
They're gonna go with it. They're gonna give you a fucking sledgehammer and be like, "I see what you can do, dog." I'm just being straight up. You know, you're going for a construction job. I mean, um, which let me tell you something. There's some there's some really high paying jobs in construction. Uh, don't don't think it's like that. There's some serious heavy jobs in construction, but a watch is pretty much not gonna really matter in that position. Nowadays, with the whole flex culture BS. Um, you kind of have to be mindful of how the other person is gonna react. Um, you know, it might be a great watch for you and that's fine. As long as you like that watch, that's all that matters. But, you know, you, you might just walk into an interview and the guy's like looking at you like, what the heck is that thing? You know, Lord knows there's some watches out there that are, you know, not that great. If you're a PE coach and you're pretty much applying at the school board, I don't think a day day two is the right watch to wear. I mean, like I said, you could be day trading and have plenty of investments and great side job, but I just, I just think it's gonna raise some eyebrows. Like, the heck is he doing on his spare time? You might want to stick to the Fitbit for that one. <laughs> so I'm curious to know what you guys think about this sort of situation out there when you're applying for a job. And if you have any other examples you'd like to share, please, by all means, put it on the comments. And if you like this video, like and share it with someone else. Also, subscribe to my new YouTube channel.